to understand the full context of my um, my own experience and my own testimony, I have to share a little bit about what happened before mm -hmm. I came to Bethel. Um, I grew up Roman Catholic, um, and I, I became an like atheist. <laughs> um, and when I got saved, I actually got saved um, in a Word of Faith church. Mm -hmm. um, and in a word. it a word of faith church what does that mean so that's a kind of name it and claim it no oh. where you can speak things into existence mm -hmm. because god has somehow endowed you with the ability to mm -hmm. create with your words mm -hmm. really wasn't the church that you know they didn't really present the gospel but i started reading my bible after going to that church and um the gospel just was empowered by the Holy Spirit, by by God, and it changed my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went from there and I kept seeking the truth through the word, but I was attending this word of faith church and I felt like I wasn't getting the truth that I wanted. I wanted to be fed meat mm -hmm. and not milk. I wanted to graduate mm -hmm. from, um, from what they were, you know, propagating. And so I found myself in a end times legalistic cult. And just mm -hmm. to briefly summarize the experience, um, the leader of this cult told me that God told him that I was supposed to be his wife, that we were going to move to Africa, and that I was going to be martyred. And so over the course of the six months mm -hmm. that I was That's in this cult, cult. Um, I was preparing myself to die. And so eventually, um, I'm only 18 years old. That's so scary because as a new believer and you want to do everything that you can because you are so grateful to God yeah. that people just take advantage of you. You're yeah. there just like, well, this person is grateful. I can tell her whatever it is. She doesn't know her Bible that well and she is going to believe me. That is so sad. Yeah. And what what's fascinating to me is in cultish st uh, style churches, uh, when when the, the the authority or the pastor or apostle whoever or prophet whoever it is gives a prophecy in those environments that word is final yeah because they they in their mind and in the people's mind they have the final word on mm -hmm. things yeah, and so because to, they're yeah. basically like this is god mm -hmm. and this is almost like they're a jesus on earth god mm -hmm. only speaks to them and they're able to speak. or they have some kind of really special insight into and by say by jesus is almost like a mediator from the church mm -hmm. to, yes. to to and god. pastors are not mediators no from god to the church not. christ is the mediator mm -hmm. christ is the head mm -hmm. and the word is the primary means of divine revelation mm -hmm. And if the pastor is a good pastor, he will stick to the divine revelation and nothing mm -hmm. outside of that. Yeah. Um, That's so, so sad. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so sad. I can't even imagine somebody telling me that. And yeah, imagine. for her, a she young was lady, like, yeah. I was, I was, re I was preparing myself to die because mm -hmm. she didn't know any better. Yeah. She thought she was going to a church that they believed yeah. in the true God and that they were, he somehow had this, this prophecy that she's like, well, this is what God has called me to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, in the mind of a new believer or in the mind of an immature believer, mm -hmm. since the pastor is the pastor, he, ha he has authority, mm -hmm. then whatever he says is going to be is going to be the truth. Mm -hmm. And actually, I want to talk a little bit about false prophets and mm -hmm. false prophecies in the church today. Mm -hmm. So um, you, we, you and I have been in multiple church contexts mm -hmm. um, and we have seen different kinds of worship contexts mm -hmm. and I have seen and you have seen false prophets mm -hmm. and false prophecies oh, yeah. promulgated in the church. Yes. The unfortunate thing is the same thing as hers, like in these church contexts, just because they claim themselves to be somebody, just because they claim themselves to be a prophet, their word is taken at face value. Mm -hmm. As if, yep, that that's that's the case because that's oh, well, they're a prophet. Mm -hmm. So, so read start with Matthew seven fifteen. Okay, so Matthew seven fifteen says, "Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves." Yeah, right there, that's good. So, false prophets, 
they come in a in a in a persona of love and care and compassion and authority mm -hmm. but really all they're trying to do is destroy you mm -hmm. they're ravenous wolves mm -hmm. they're trying to use you to mm -hmm. their advantage and, and in a cult environment they they have manipulative tactics mm -hmm. absolutely they'll say this is what god told me this is do you want to be faithful to the lord they'll use words like mm -hmm. that do you want to be faithful to god um now there you want to honor god mm, don't you want to be obedient mm -hmm. or something like that now to a certain degree we are called to be obedient mm -hmm. and to obey our elders and our pastors but not to the extent to where they're abusing their power mm -hmm. or manipulating you mm -hmm. into thinking that you must you must perform certain duties in order to be right with god mm -hmm. And this is what was happening to this young lady was that mm -hmm. um, she was being manipulated by this man, mm -hmm. probably this older man, probably who was telling this young girl mm -hmm. that he was probably attracted to, mm -hmm. that he probably had feelings for mm -hmm. and was telling her, God told me that you're going to be my wife. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, that's going to be to your benefit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> And that you're and that we're going to go to Africa. Yeah, of course. Again, that's your benefit and that you're going to be martyred. Well, that means that you get to live. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that is manipulation. So she has to sacrifice way. everything. He sacrifices nothing. Mm -hmm. He gains scenario. everything in mm -hmm. this scenario. Uh, I want to read Jeremiah fourteen fourteen. It says, um, And the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. Mm -hmm. I did not send them, nor did I command them or speak to them. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. God judges us. God judges. God judged the nation of Israel for listening to false prophets. Mm -hmm. He judges us for listening to false prophets, mm -hmm. um, and he um, he sends them as a judgment. Mm -hmm. Listen, and to a certain extent, back then, they did not have the ability to have a Bible. They didn't always mm -hmm. know all of the scripture. Right. So they they told them, okay, listen to me. I know the scripture. If anybody comes to you and tries to tell you anything different from me, right. then that's a false prophet. Yep. We have no excuse. <laughs> we we literally yeah. we literally have at least 10 bibles here in this house at least 10 Bibles. we are without excuse for somebody yeah. to come and falsely try to teach us something brainwash us with something yeah. that is contrary to the bible we need to read yeah. our bibles absolutely and look at the scriptures tell us look at, i don't despise prophecies the mm -hmm. scriptures tell us not to despise prophecies mm -hmm. but we are to test, to test them. everything mm -hmm. We are to test the words of a prophet. And so when, when somebody comes to me and says, I have a prophecy, I have a word for you. I already know they mean they have a prophetic word for mm -hmm. me. So in, uh, immediately my mind says, prepare yourself to hear something really crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when it's not, it's like, whoa, this yeah. is awesome. No, so I always tell myself, mm -hmm. okay, so prepare yourself because what you're getting ready to hear is probably not true. Mm hmm and that's a, actually a good way to start hearing a prophecy mm -hmm. is to think maybe i should judge this once i start hearing it mm -hmm. so once it's said to you or once it's said to me mm -hmm. immediately say okay thank you for that i'll take it up in prayer mm -hmm. you are not obligated to say thank you so much yes i'll do it right away mm -hmm. no no or yes you're right i'm just gonna listen and obey be obedient to that's unless not... unless it is something you have already been praying about mm -hmm. god has already put that on your heart and you have been asking for a sign and somebody randomly that you might not even know comes up to you and confirms that without even knowing that you've been praying for it, then you could yeah. say oh my gosh thank you yeah but you are not obligated you are not obligated to heed the words of mm -hmm. that prophet. The, the words of a prophet, if they call themselves a prophet, mm -hmm. are not equal to the divine authority of Scripture. Mm -hmm. They're not equal to that. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, when somebody gives you a prophecy, mm -hmm. that's not them speaking on behalf of God. Mm -hmm. That's them trying to encourage you or maybe give you a word that will help to edify you, build you up, or rebuke you even. Mm -hmm. 
but it is not authoritative divine truth okay so i honestly think that for me personally i think those prophets that call themselves prophets for the most part you see them coming to rebuke and say repent for you have in the old testament yeah. absolutely yes absolutely uh -huh. so mm -hmm. and i'm always if somebody comes and tells me i have a word for you i'm like oh gosh what did i do <laughs> there's sin in my life oh my goodness <laughs> yes lord cleanse me but um but yes, so mm -hmm. there, I, th I do think that there can be times where mm -hmm. God confirms things through a brother or sister that gives a word mm -hmm. that is a prophetic word that speaks into your life mm -hmm. that either edifies you, builds you up, or it can, it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a prophecy in the sense of prophecy. It can be a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or um, something that builds you up, you know. I'm just saying, like, I've been watching you and you've blessed my heart. Mm -hmm. But if somebody that? comes to you and says, yeah. the Lord told me this and this will happen to you. And that's it. And you say, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I will pray about it and I will seek the Lord in this. Mm -hmm. And then a day goes by, two days go by, three weeks go by, six months go by, a year goes by, five years go by. Nothing comes up about it. That's a false prophecy. Mm -hmm. And that person should not be giving any prophecies in the church. Mm -hmm. They should close their mouth because there are false prophets. That's mm -hmm. a false prophecy. Don't go around telling people these things if all of your prophecies are not true. Because mm -hmm. I've seen it. And you and I have seen it. Yes. <laughs> where somebody says, you're going to be pregnant and you're going to have a girl or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we think, okay, cool. So we wait. And then they're not pregnant. <laughs> it's like, so was that a or word from are, the Lord? Or they are, it's a boy. Or it's, yeah. So was that a word from the Lord? Or was that just you trying to mm -hmm. manipulate? What were you trying to do there? What, mm -hmm. what, I'm trying to understand this in this context, you know. Mm -hmm. Or in this in this young girl's case, in mm -hmm. this young lady's case. The Lord told me, you're going to be my wife. You're going to Africa. You're going to be martyred. <sighs> That's heavy. That is a heavy word, if you want to call it a word. But I'm obviously, saved. she's not married to him, and she's not in Africa, and she's very much alive. And obviously, so. <laughs> she was saved because the Lord was like, nope, get out of that church. Yeah. 